The morning sun bathed the quiet suburban neighborhood in a golden light. Neighbors waved at each other from their driveways, and children laughed as they chased after school buses. On Maplewood Lane, the Reed's house stood out, not just for its impeccable landscaping, but for the aura of perfection that seemed to emanate from it. Emily Reed, a beloved schoolteacher in her mid-thirties, stepped out of her front door, her smile radiant as she waved goodbye to her husband, David. David Reed, a successful architect with a charm that could light up a room, returned her wave with a smile that didn't quite reach his eyes. Have a great day, darling, he called out, his voice smooth and warm. Emily nodded, a slight hesitance in her eyes before she turned and walked toward her car. The smile faded the moment her back was turned. As Emily drove away, David watched her car until it disappeared around the corner. Only then did he close the door, the smile vanishing from his face. He walked into the living room, where everything was meticulously arranged, just the way he liked it. The silence in the house was heavy, almost suffocating. David's mind raced, his thoughts a chaotic whirl of anger, betrayal, and something darker. Emily's life appeared perfect to anyone on the outside. She was the kind of teacher every parent wished their child had, dedicated, kind, and always willing to go the extra mile. Her students adored her, and her colleagues respected her. At home, she played the role of the dutiful wife, always supportive of David's career, always ready with a smile. But beneath the surface, cracks were forming. Emily's marriage to David had started as a fairy tale. He was charming, ambitious, and attentive. But over the years, his charm had turned to control, his ambition to obsession. Emily felt more like an accessory to his life than an equal partner. The weight of maintaining the facade of a perfect marriage was becoming unbearable. It wasn't always this way. When Emily first met David in college, he was everything she had ever dreamed of. Tall, handsome, with a quick wit and an infectious laugh, David swept Emily off her feet. He was the kind of man who made everyone around him feel special, who had a way of making you believe that anything was possible. Their romance was a whirlwind, full of late-night talks, spontaneous trips, and grand gestures of love. They married quickly, much to the envy of their friends, who saw them as the perfect couple. But as the years passed, the shine began to wear off. David's ambition, once one of the things Emily admired most about him, became a source of tension. He was always working, always striving for more, and nothing ever seemed to be enough. Emily tried to be supportive, but she couldn't shake the feeling that she was losing him that the man she had fallen in love with was slipping away. David, for his part, didn't see it that way. To him, everything he did was for their future, for the life they were building together. He was determined to provide for Emily, to give her everything she could ever want. But in his pursuit of success, he failed to notice how distant he had become, how his need for control was suffocating the woman he loved. Emily had found solace in a colleague, Michael Bennett, a quiet and gentle man who understood her in ways David never did. Their connection had begun innocently. Shared lunches in the school cafeteria, conversations about books and teaching methods. But as Emily's loneliness grew, so did her feelings for Michael. Their friendship evolved into something more, something forbidden, but something that made Emily feel alive again. She had tried to end it, of course. The guilt was overwhelming. But every time she pulled away... The emptiness of her life with David pulled her back. Michael was the only thing that made her feel human, made her feel loved. And so the affair continued, a secret she carried with her every day, a secret that would eventually lead to her downfall. That evening, when Emily didn't return home, David's initial calm exterior began to crack. He called her cell phone repeatedly, but it went straight to voicemail. By nightfall, he had called the police, his voice filled with genuine panic, or at least that's how it seemed. The police arrived at the Reed house shortly after David's call. Detective Sarah Mitchell, a seasoned investigator with a sharp mind and a keen sense of intuition, took charge of the case. She had seen enough disappearances in her career to know that time was of the essence. David met the officers at the door, his face pale, his hands shaking. I don't know where she is, he said, his voice trembling. She was supposed to come home hours ago. This isn't like her. She's never late. Detective Mitchell studied David, noting the signs of distress. But there was something in his eyes, a glimmer of something that didn't quite fit the situation. "'We'll do everything we can to find her, Mr. Reed,' she assured him, her tone professional but warm. 
The search for Emily began immediately. The community, shocked by the news, rallied together. Neighbors, friends, and even strangers joined the search, combing through the neighborhood, nearby parks, and any place Emily might have gone. David was front and center, giving tearful interviews to the media, pleading for his wife's safe return. But as the days passed and no trace of Emily was found, the mood shifted. The media began to speculate, the whispers of suspicion growing louder. Where was Emily? Why hadn't she been found? And why was David so quick to involve the police? Detective Mitchell, too, was beginning to have her doubts. Something about David's demeanor didn't sit right with her. He was too polished, too controlled. She had seen genuine grief before, and this wasn't it. But without any evidence, all she had was a gut feeling. As the investigation deepened, Detective Mitchell's team uncovered a startling revelation. Emily was having an affair. The discovery shocked the community, tarnishing the image of the perfect school teacher. The affair became the focus of the investigation, with Michael Bennett, Emily's lover, becoming the prime suspect. Michael was brought in for questioning, his quiet demeanor contrasting sharply with the intense scrutiny he was under. He admitted to the affair, his voice filled with regret and sorrow. I never wanted to hurt anyone, he said, his eyes downcast. Emily was unhappy. She didn't deserve this. But despite the scandal, something didn't add up. Michael's alibi was solid, and there was no evidence linking him to Emily's disappearance. Detective Mitchell began to suspect that the affair was a red herring, a convenient distraction from the real truth. Behind closed doors, the Reed house had become a prison for Emily. David's control over her had grown over the years, his demands becoming more unreasonable, his temper more unpredictable. Emily found herself walking on eggshells, constantly trying to avoid setting him off. The man she had once loved had become a stranger, a tyrant who dictated every aspect of her life. David had always been possessive, but it wasn't until Emily began to pull away that his behavior became truly alarming. He started tracking her every move, demanding to know where she was at all times. He monitored her phone calls, her emails, even her interactions with neighbors. Emily was trapped, isolated from the outside world, her every action scrutinized by the man who claimed to love her. The affair with Michael was a desperate escape, a brief respite from the suffocating control David exerted over her. But even that wasn't enough. Emily knew she needed to leave David, but she was terrified. Terrified of what he might do, terrified of the unknown. So she stayed, trapped in a life that was slowly killing her. As the investigation continued, Detective Mitchell's doubts about David grew. She started digging deeper into his background, looking for anything that might explain his behavior. What she found was disturbing. David had a history of controlling behavior, something Emily had confided in her best friend, Linda Harper. Linda had tried to persuade Emily to leave David, but Emily had been too afraid. He wasn't always like this, Emily had told her, but lately I feel like I'm walking on eggshells all the time. There were also financial troubles, something Emily hadn't known about. David had been hiding the fact that his architectural firm was struggling and he was drowning in debt. Emily's disappearance would conveniently solve many of his problems, especially with the large life insurance policy he had taken out on her just months before. Detective Mitchell's suspicions were further aroused when a neighbor came forward with security camera footage from the night Emily disappeared. The footage showed David's car leaving the house late at night, contradicting his alibi that he had been home all night. Armed with this new evidence, Detective Mitchell obtained a warrant to search the Reed home. What they found in the basement was chilling. Blood traces, carefully cleaned but not entirely erased, told a story of violence. It was clear now that Emily had never left the house alive. David was brought in for questioning again, this time under far more scrutiny. He maintained his innocence, his demeanor calm but increasingly strained. I loved my wife, he insisted. I would never hurt her. But the evidence was mounting and David's facade was beginning to crack. Under the relentless pressure of interrogation, he finally broke down. David's confession was as shocking as it was horrifying. He had discovered Emily's affair weeks before her disappearance. The knowledge had driven him into a cold, calculating rage. But instead of confronting her, he decided to use the affair to his advantage. David began to manipulate Emily's communications, intercepting her emails and messages, planting seeds of doubt and fear in her mind. He made her believe that her affair was about to be exposed, that she would lose everything, 
her job, her reputation, her life. Emily, isolated and terrified, had no one to turn to. On the night of her disappearance, David confronted Emily, but not in the way she had expected. He played the role of the hurt, betrayed husband, expressing his deep sorrow and love for her despite her infidelity. Emily, racked with guilt and fear, broke down, apologizing, begging for forgiveness. And then David struck. In a fit of rage, he attacked her, the years of suppressed anger and resentment exploding in a moment of violence. Emily's death was not premeditated, at least not in the way one might think. But once she was dead, David's calculating nature took over. He meticulously cleaned the scene, disposing of Emily's body in a remote location, a place he knew well, a place where he used to take architectural photographs. He then staged the disappearance, ensuring that all signs pointed to her lover, Michael. The affair had been a perfect cover, a way to shift suspicion away from himself. But David had underestimated the thoroughness of the investigation and the strength of Detective Mitchell's instincts. After his confession, the details of David's actions became public, sending shockwaves through the community. The man they had all admired, the charming architect with the perfect life, was a cold-blooded killer. The media frenzy that followed was relentless, with every detail of the case dissected and analyzed. But beneath the surface of this shocking crime was the story of a woman who had been slowly destroyed by the man who claimed to love her. Emily Reed was not just a victim of murder. She was a victim of years of manipulation, control, and psychological abuse. Her story became a grim reminder of the hidden dangers that can lurk within even the most seemingly perfect relationships. The trial that followed was swift. David Reed's guilt was never in question, and his confession sealed his fate. He was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In the courtroom, David remained eerily calm, his expression blank as the verdict was read. It was as if he had already resigned himself to his fate, the mask he had worn for so long finally slipping away. But the true final twist came after the trial when Detective Mitchell discovered that David had taken out a large life insurance policy on Emily just months before her disappearance. The policy, combined with his financial troubles, provided the final, chilling motive for his actions. For Linda Harper, Emily's best friend, the news of David's guilt was devastating. She had always known something was wrong in Emily's marriage, but she had never imagined it would end like this. The guilt of not being able to save her friend weighed heavily on her, a burden she would carry for the rest of her life. Michael Bennett, the man who had loved Emily and been drawn into this tragic web, was also left to pick up the pieces of his shattered life. He left town soon after the trial, unable to face the reminders of the life he had once hoped to build with Emily. The scandal had destroyed him, leaving him a broken man. Detective Sarah Mitchell, who had led the investigation with unwavering determination, reflected on the case with a mix of satisfaction and sorrow. She had brought a killer to justice, but the cost had been high. Emily Reed was dead, her life cut short by the man who was supposed to love and protect her. As she drove past the Reed house one last time, Detective Mitchell couldn't help but feel a deep sense of unease. The house looked the same as it always had, beautiful, well-kept, and utterly ordinary. But now she knew the truth. Beneath the surface of that perfect life, a darkness had festered, hidden from view until it was too late. The case was closed, but the questions lingered. How had David Reed become the monster he was? Was it the pressure of his failing career, the strain of financial ruin? Or had the darkness always been there, waiting for the right moment to emerge? In the end, there were no easy answers. The only certainty was that Emily Reed's life had been stolen from her by the man she had once trusted above all others. And for those who knew her, that was a truth they would never be able to forget. In the months that followed, the Reed house stood empty, a silent monument to the horrors that had unfolded within its walls. The once vibrant home was now a place of darkness, its perfect facade shattered. The flowers in the garden wilted, the lawn grew unkempt, and the curtains remained drawn. Neighbors who once admired the reeds now crossed the street to avoid looking at the house, as if even acknowledging its existence could bring bad luck. The community, too, was left to grapple with the truth. The neighbors who had once rallied to support David were now haunted by the realization that they had been deceived by a master manipulator. The case became a cautionary tale, a reminder that even the most charming and successful people could harbor dark and deadly intentions. 
The media moved on to the next big story, but for those who had been close to Emily, the pain remained. Linda Harper, still reeling from the loss of her best friend, struggled to find a sense of normalcy. She threw herself into her work, but every quiet moment brought back memories of Emily, her laugh, her kindness, the way she had always been there for Linda, even when her own life was falling apart. Linda couldn't shake the feeling that she had failed Emily. She had seen the signs, had known that something was wrong, but she hadn't done enough. The guilt was a constant companion, gnawing at her, making her question everything she had done or hadn't done. She began attending support groups for those who had lost loved ones to domestic violence, hoping to find some solace in the shared experiences of others. But the guilt remained. A heavy weight she couldn't lift. Michael Bennett, too, was haunted by what had happened. He had loved Emily, had seen in her the same loneliness and longing that he felt in himself. But now that love felt like a betrayal, as if he had somehow been complicit in the events that led to her death, he couldn't bear to stay in the town where they had met, where every corner held a memory of what might have been. So he left, moving to a small town where no one knew him, where he could start over. But the past followed him. The memories of Emily and the life they had dreamed of together, a constant reminder of what had been lost. For Detective Sarah Mitchell, the case was one of the most difficult of her career. She had solved many cases, had seen the worst of humanity, but this one stayed with her. There was something about the way David had manipulated everyone around him, the coldness with which he had planned and executed his wife's murder, that made this case different. It wasn't just the violence, it was the psychological torment, the way he had systematically destroyed Emily's life long before he took it. Mitchell found herself thinking about the case long after it was over, replaying the events in her mind, wondering if there was something she could have done differently. Could she have seen through David's facade earlier? Could she have saved Emily before it was too late? These questions kept her up at night, and though she knew she had done everything she could, the doubts lingered. The Reed House was eventually put up for sale, but no one wanted to buy it. The stigma of what had happened there was too great. It sat on the market for months, a grim reminder of the tragedy that had occurred. Finally, it was sold at a steep discount to a developer who planned to tear it down and build something new in its place. But even then, the lot remained empty, as if the ground itself was cursed. As the seasons changed and the leaves began to fall, the Reed House remained empty a reminder to all who passed by of the tragedy that had unfolded within its walls. The perfect life, it turned out, was nothing more than an illusion, a mask that hid the darkness beneath. And so life went on in the quiet suburb, but nothing was ever quite the same again. The shadows of what had happened lingered, a permanent stain on the community, a reminder that even in the most perfect of places, evil can thrive. <laughs> 